The Wolf and the Five Little Goats There was once a mother goat who had five little kids. One day the mother goat was going to the forest to gather some wood for her fire. Now my little kids, she said, you must be very careful while I am away. Lock the door behind me and do not open it to anybody until I return. If the wicked wolf should get in, he would certainly eat you. The little kids promised they would be careful and then their mother set off for the forest and as soon as she had gone, they locked the door behind her. Now, it so happened the old wolf was out prowling that day. He saw the mother goat trotting away toward the forest and as soon as she was out of sight, he crept down to the house and knocked at the door. Rap, tap, tap. Who's there? called the little kids within. It is I, your mother, my dears, answered the wolf in his great rough voice. Open the door and let me in. But the kids were very clever little kids. No, no, they cried. You are not our mother. Our mother has a soft, sweet voice and your voice is harsh and rough. You must be the wolf. When the wolf heard this, he was very angry. He battered and battered at the door, but they would not let him in. Then he turned and galloped away as fast as he could until he came to a dairy. There, he stuck his head in at the window and the woman had just finished churning her butter. Woman, woman, cried the wolf, give me some butter. If you do not, I will come in and upset your churn. The woman was frightened. At once she gave him a great deal of butter, all he could eat. The wolf swallowed it down and then he ran back to the goat's house and knocked at the door. Rap, tap, tap. Who is there? asked the little goats within. Your mother, my dears, answered the wolf and now his voice was very soft and smooth because of the butter that he had swallowed. It is our mother, cried the little kids, and they were about to open the door. But the littlest kid of all, who was very wise, stopped them. Wait a moment, he said. It sounds like our mother's voice, but before we open the door, we had better be very, very sure it is not the wolf. Then he called through the door. Put your paws up on the windowsill. The wolf suspected nothing. He put his paws up on the windowsill and as soon as the little kids saw them, they knew at once that it was not their mother. No, no, they cried. You are not our mother. Our mother has pretty white feet and your feet are as black as soot. You must be the wolf. When the wolf heard this, he was angrier than ever. He turned and galloped away again, and as he galloped, he growled to himself and gnashed his teeth. Soon he came to a baker's shop, and there he stuck his head in at the window. Baker, baker, give me some flour, he cried. If you do not, I will upset your pans and spoil your baking. The baker was frightened. At once he gave the wolf all the flour he wanted. The wolf took it and ran away with it. He ran until he came to the goat's house. There he sat down and covered his black feet all over with the white flour. And then he knocked at the door. Rap, tap, tap. Who's there? cried the little goats within. Your mother, my dears, come home again, answered the wolf in his smooth, buttery voice. Put your paws up on the windowsill. The wolf put his paws up on the windowsill and they looked quite white because of the flower. Then the little kids felt sure it was their mother and they gladly opened the door. In bounded the wicked wolf. The little goats cried out and away they ran, some in one direction and some in another. They hid themselves, one behind the door 
and one in the dough trough and one in the wash tub and one under the bed and one, and he was the littlest one of all, hid in the tall clock case. The wolf stood there glaring about him but he could not see a single one of them. Then he began to hunt about for them but he was in a hurry because he was afraid that the mother goat would come home again. He found the kid behind the door and he was in such a hurry he swallowed it whole without hurting it in the least. He found the one in the wash tub and he swallowed it whole too. He found the one in the dough trough and it too he swallowed whole. He found the one under the bed and he swallowed it whole. The only one he did not find was the one in the clock case and he never thought of looking there. He hunted around and hunted around and he was afraid to stay any longer in case their mother came home. By now the old wolf felt very heavy and sleepy. He looked around for a place to go in order to lie down and rest. Not far away were some rocks and trees. Here the wolf stretched himself out and soon he was snoring so loudly that the leaves of the trees shook overhead. Soon after this, the mother goat came home. As soon as she saw the door of the house standing open, she knew at once that something bad had happened. She went in and looked around her. The furniture was all tipped up and scattered about the room. My dear little kids, cried the mother. The wicked wolf has certainly been here and eaten them all. He didn't eat me, said a little voice in the clock case. The mother goat opened the door of the clock case and the littlest kid of all hopped out. But why were you in the clock case? And what has happened? asked the mother. Then the little kid told her all about how the wolf had come there with his buttery voice and his whitened paws and how they had let him in and how he had swallowed all four of the other little kids so that he alone was left. After the mother goat had heard the story she went to the door and looked about. Then she heard the old wolf snoring where he lay asleep under the trees in the shade of the rocks. That must be the old wolf snoring, said the mother goat, and he cannot be far away. Do not make a noise, my little kid, but come with me. The mother goat crept over to the heap of rocks and the little kid followed her on tiptoes. She peeped down and there lay the old wolf fast asleep. Now, my little kid, whispered the mother, run straight home again as fast as you can and fetch me my scissors and a needle and some strong thread. The little kid did as his mother said and he ran so softly over the grass that not even a mouse could have heard him. As soon as he returned, the mother goat crept up to the old wolf and with the sharp scissors she slit the wolf's tummy open like a sack. Out popped one little kid and out popped another little kid and another and another and there they all were, safe and sound. And all this while the wolf carried on sleeping and snoring. And now my little kids, whispered the mother, each one of you shall bring me a round stone but be very quick and quiet. So the little kids ran away and hunted around and each brought their mother back a big round stone and they were very quick and very quiet about it just as their mother had asked them to be. The mother goat put the stones inside the wolf and then sewed his tummy back up using the strong thread. After that she and the little kids hid themselves behind the rocks and watched and waited. Soon the old wolf yawned and opened his eyes. 
Then he got up and shook himself. And when he did so, the stones inside him rattled together so that the goat and the little kids could hear them where they hid behind the rocks. Oh dear, oh dear me, groaned the wolf. What is so heavy and rattles against my poor bones? Not little goats, I fear, but only big stones. Now, what with the stones inside of him and the hot sun overhead, the wolf grew very thirsty. Nearby was a deep well with water almost up to the top of it. The old wolf went to drink. He leaned over and all the stones rolled up to his head and he lost his balance. Plump! He went down into the water and the stones carried him straight to the bottom. He could not swim at all and so he was drowned. All the little kids ran out from behind the rocks and began to dance around the well. The old wolf is dead, hurrah, hurrah, the old wolf is dead, hurrah, they sang. And the mother goat came and danced with them. They were all so delighted.